Now everyone, Cliff here in the shed again. <clears throat> well, since getting the uh, motor and the new control panel and the VFD sorted out, I turned my attention to making the back panel upstand, whatever you'd want to call it, for me MCO. And there it is. I didn't film it because uh, I didn't think watching me wandering about with a saw and a rivet gun would be particularly interesting. But it's getting a bit closer and I'll show you what I've done. So basically it's two sides, a back, a bottom and a shelf which I've drilled some holes in up there to take some of the stuff I use all the time and I've got a bit of uh, aluminium U channel on here which fits my tool holders. It's just a bit of MDF on the top and I housed it in some smaller aluminium U channel which you can see at the back better probably uh, nothing particularly special about it <clears throat> the other thing is the bit of the motor that was sticking out is now totally enclosed this is the bit I cut out of here to go over the motor and this is just a bit of plastic that I use my heat gun around the paint tin to melt into shape and then use these little brackets to get it on there it's only bolted on just there and then there's another little angle bracket on the side down there and uh, just a bracket at the back that I'll show you in a minute so this is what I've made it out of it's, um, it has got a name I can't remember what it is at the moment but it's aluminium about half a millimetre aluminium then plastic inside that and then another bit of aluminium um, it cuts dead easy you just cut it with an hand saw it's pretty rigid you can drill it and tap well I don't know about tapping it but you can drill it and rivet it <coughs> um, but I didn't buy it I, uh, I came across it one morning blowing about the ice street when I was taking my daughters up the station it was a shop sign. Let me take you around the back and I'll show you. Let me move up around the back here. That's the back of it. This was a sign of an Afro Caribbean food shop that was in the high street. I think they had gone out of business or just changed the sign, I'm not sure which, but. This was folded over and blowing about the ice street. It was a bit damaged and we'd had folded it over to chuck it in the skip. If it ever made a skip, I'm not sure, but I came across it and thought that could be handy. So that's what I made it out of. And there's the little bracket on the side there. <coughs> Just holds it in place here. It's all pretty steady and there's a bracket I made underneath. It's pretty steady and firm, and that's all my uh, most used bits and pieces, whatever I'm doing at the time. Now you may be wondering why I've done it so deep front to back here. Um, it's not just so I can store a load of swarf in there between putting it in the bin, although that'll inevitably happen, but. I do intend to put a DRO on this not just because I want to work more accurately I mean a DRO is great I've got one on me milling machine which it came with but I take all the guesswork out of backlash and you've got a great big screen with great big numbers on it and with my dodgy mince pies that's a uh, quite an handy thing so I had a look, there's a, a video by Mr. Pragmatic Lee where he puts one on a similar sort of lathe to this. It's not not the same lathe, but it's got a similar the way the back is set up and that on this. But it's the cross slide bit that's always a bit of a problem on a lathe for the DRO. And he mounts his on a bracket out the back here. So you need that big space out there. You need about, I need about a foot, although this has only got a six inch travel, I think they've got about 70 mil mounting on either side of the 150 for the glass slide. So 
that will stick out back here. So as soon as I've earned enough YouTube money, I'm going to buy myself a DRO. And then again, I have got a birthday coming up next month. Perhaps my kids will buy me a bit of it. So keep watching the adverts. And subscribing. Thanks. So there is something that irritates me a bit on this, which is I'm going to have a look at sorting out now. And that's the um, towel stock. You have to use a spanner to do it up and release it and undo it. Which is a bit of a pain. Now... I'm going to do something about this nut. Now I did think of just getting a bit of bar and thread in it because it's just an M10 thread on here. But when the... Um, if you're in this sort of position with it, I think it could be a, get, get in the way here a bit. So I didn't want to do anything that was too permanent. So... What I've decided to do, I've got this carrot old 17mm socket from a box of shit at a boot fair. So I'm just going to get a bit of material, mill a square on the end of it, put a chamfer on it and put an handle on it and see how we get on. It don't need an awful lot of movement this, I mean that's it tight there. I mean... And that's how much movement, that's how much movement of the nut you need to, that wasn't very helpful was it, but, so it's, um, like I say, I want to make it so I can take it off if I have to, so I'm going to cut a little bit of, don't know how big that is, I'll measure that in a minute, but I'm going to cut a bit of material with that and square it up on the lathe, take it over to the mill, put the, put the, um, square on it and then put a chamfer on it Off to the meal.
is a bloody socket. <clears throat> Hopefully that'll be it. That's him. Oh, that's a good, nice, tight fit. Right, so this is just about where I want it because I want to get it as long as I can. And there's a chamfer, uh, an angle on here. So when I get the chamfer on this, I think that will slip over the nut. So what I'm going to do now, <coughs> back a bit so you're in focus. So what I'm going to do now is lock tight that in, leave it overnight and do a bit on it tomorrow. 